antennas. A portable antenna is any antenna that doesn't require Terry Martin to put up. Um, it doesn't require an air can, a ladder, a fire truck, a lifting platform. Um, you know, typically you're going to person carry it to the site, installed by one or two people, preferably one, within a short period of time. Um, that implies that the antenna is going to be low to the ground. You're probably not bringing an air can into a public to a public park. You're probably not bringing an air can into the beach because there's nothing to use for the air cannon, right? Um, so let's remember the horizontal antennas low to the ground have higher takeoff angles. If you've got a, a 40 meter antenna and you've only got it up 10 feet, that's well below a quarter wavelength, that's going to be an NVIS antenna. The signal is going to go up, bounce off the ionosphere, come back down with about a 100 mile radius. Um, uh, the exception to that is if you're on a tall building or a steep hill, cliff top, that's like being having your antenna a thousand feet above ground or whatever. Uh, so when you see, a lot of times you'll see these things like somebody, well, I took my buddy pole up to the top of whatever mountain, my buddy pole horizontal, and I got 3,000 miles. I understand what you're saying. Well, yeah, you're on, the, you're on the top of a mountain. That's like being, that's like having your antenna 10,000 feet above ground. Of course you are. Um, so you may not work distant stations if you're using a low horizontal antenna because your signal is going to go like this. The distant station who's got a nice beam up on top of a 65 foot, foot, foot tower, he's got a nice angle and he's, he's hitting you here but your signal is only going there. So if you're going to put up a horizontal antenna you have to understand that you're mostly going to be local stations. And only those local stations who have a similar kind of antenna situation to, to be able to bounce and hit you. Um, NVIS is controlled by what's called the maximum usable frequency, also called the F0, F2. There are places you can see what it is currently on the, on the web. If you're operating above the MUF for the current conditions, your signal is going up into space. So for example, I'm always, getting, I'm always hearing these Aries guys who are going, well, you know, we'll just put up a 20 meter NVIS antenna. Around here, there is no such thing as a 20 meter NVIS antenna. The MUF, maximum MUF in the middle of the winter might, winter day, might be 10 megahertz. Maybe, you know, and that's fairly rare. So you try to put up an antenna for 40 meters, I mean for 20 meters or 10 meters, that signal's just going straight up in the air. Uh, antennas close to the ground become omnidirectional. Um, so if you put up an antenna that's only 10 or 20 feet above ground, you have an omnidirectional a horizontal antenna, 10 or 20 feet above ground. You have an omnidirectional antenna that's very good for about a 100 mile radius. On vertical antennas, on the other hand, are omnidirectional and tend to be distant antennas, especially when mounted on the ground. Because the vertical antenna is trying to bounce a signal off the ground to at a, at a slight angle and, and get a, way, a bounce way far away. So vertical means DX. So if you're going out in the field and you want to do DX, you want to put up a vertical antenna. Um, but notice verticals may not work close in stations. It's the exact flip of the horizontal. So if you, if you take a vertical antenna and you want to talk to somebody who's 100 miles away, chances are you can't. Okay, so I, I went with a buddy pole a long time, this is actually a couple years ago already, and got exactly the expected results. From Cape Cod, uh, with, a, with a vertical, I was hitting Europe, I was hitting Argentina, I couldn't talk to anybody in Boston. I was on Cape Cod. When I set it up as a horizontal antenna, I could talk to Boston fine, I could hear Europe, I could hear South America, but I couldn't talk to them at all. Just, you know, proof. And remember, you also have to consider what antenna they're using. Because if you've got a vertical and they've got a horizontal, you may not be able to hit them and they may not be able to hit you. Okay, and this is just reference of wavelengths. We, we won't do it right now. I mean, there's nothing that's all over right now. Um, a lot of people use short dipoles for portable operations. That's the buddy pole. That's probably the best known. They do a lot of advertising. And you always see him with his picture. Yeah, here he is. This is the guy who invented that bud. 
Um, and it's great. And boy, I take it with me down to the Caribbean, and I get you know 3,000, 5,000 miles on 10 watts. Well, he's up on top of a very tall hill by the ocean. Salt water is great for DX. Being up on top of a hill is great for DX. Guess what? He gets great DX. Um, this particular antenna goes 40 to, to actually 40 to two meters with these coils. You tap the coil for whatever band you're on. And you may, and these are whips that are adjustable, so you may have to adjust the whips. Um, it's a great antenna. I have one. It can be configured as a dipole. It can be configured as a vertical. It can be configured as an L, an inverted V, or an L. Now an L is a vertical antenna. So, and it, you can configure it as a vertical. That's a vertical antenna. You can configure it as a vertical dipole, which is really cool because then you don't need radials. And you can get some really good stuff. I, I take that out in my backyard, and with 25 watts, I break uh, pileups in Argentina. I had some guy in Austria yelling at me one time because he didn't believe that I was only running 25 watts. You know, a vertical on the ground is going to be very good for distance. Another favorite ham sticks mounted as a dipole. You know, ham sticks they're uh, they're a piece of of um, typically plastic uh, or fiberglass and they've got a wire wrapped around them. So the, the ham stick may only be about nine feet long, but it's got 30 or 40 or 50 feet of wire on it. So you get, um, you know, you, you, you get the full length. I think they stopped making them now. Ham sticks is out of business, but um, MFJ makes them and there's one other company. Yeah. The original ham stick company is no longer in business. Um, and fed half length single wires. You always see these advertisers EFHW, and fed half waves. Um, the best known probably is the PAR end feds. There's also Chameleon makes one. Uh, basically what you've got is a, a matching network. It's really just a ballon. Um, the radiator and you're gonna have a ground. So here's your coax coming into the matching network. You have got a ground on one side and a half wave or approximately half wave. Um, most of these are single band, I said. Uh, and as we're going to see in a minute, if it's truly a half wave, you don't actually have to ground it. Do you have uh, one of these? No, I don't. Yeah, I've got one for 80 and one for 40. Yeah. And it's been my experience. If you can stretch them out on a tall tree, they're round and wire. Yeah. Got pretty decent results with them. Yeah. Um, one of the things with this, of course, it's just wire. If you can shoot the wire up, you get a, you get a vertical. That's the There's no reason why you can't use it as a, as a vertical. Do you have a question? Yeah. yeah um, they frequently talk about you just take a long wire and throw it out someplace, and it, and it's not tuned to any particular right. frequency. How does that work? Uh, actually, I'm going to show one. Later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, it's it's the next slide after this. Okay. Uh, so other end fed options, you got your coax out to a nine to one ballon or a tuner right here. And I'm going to show this again in a minute. And then a, a half wavelength. One of the things you can do, this is the classic zip, a zep. You make it out of zip cord. Zip cord is the, is the twin wire that's used for appliances. Quarter wavelength matching stub, half wavelength radiator. And this will match with almost a one to one ratio. This is the classic way. Huh? It's a standard Ed Fed Marconi. It's a standard Ed Fed Marconi, or also called a Zepp, Zeppelin. That's what they did on the early Zeppelins. You can't mount towers on Zeppelins, on airships, so they you know, put an antenna out the back, and it works beautifully. You notice there's no tuner. Um, here we go. Random length, long wire, with a small lightweight tuner. The random wire and a tuner that the other side is grounded. And what you're doing, notice the tuner is right here, right at the start. It's not back at the rig. The antenna starts from this point on, the, the tuner just matches. So the, the rig is seeing 50 ohms, and the antenna is seeing whatever it wants to see. And, the, and these, random, these random length wires are, are really good if you can put the tuner out here. 
you can get those little MFJ portable tuners. Um, they're not that, I think they're 60 or 90 bucks. They don't have a meter on them, but most rigs have a meter on them. Not, not that one, obviously, but most rigs have a meter. So you tune with the, with the meter, with the SWR meter on the rig. The little silver box in the plastic bag there? Yeah. That is a tuner with an LED uh, indicator. Yeah. So here you go. That's for an NFED halfway. So here you go. SWR, there's a little diode there. Uh, tune or operate switch. There's your adjustment. The coax coming in. Two posts up here. One is for the antenna, one is for the ground. And there you go. So that's a tuner. And all you're doing is using the tuner to fool the radio into seeing 50 ohms and fool the antenna into thinking it's a resonant frequency. Um, actually, I want to go back just for a second to this one. If any of you know John Kolatai, um, I can't remember his quote, the, from the Norwalk Club, oh, oh, oh. Ham Source, LOL. Yeah. Uh, he runs Ham Source, uh, you know, sells some ham radio equipment. One of the things he does when he goes to to uh, ham meetings um, is he brings an 897, sorry, an 857. He brings a 30 foot, 31 foot uh, plexiglass or fiberglass um, staff. He takes one of these and he wraps it around the fiberglass mast. Okay, and he's got a beautiful antenna. Depending on what size, which size he took, he's got a great. 20 meter or 40 meter antenna there. And he operates without a tuner, he operates without, without anything, he sticks it up in the air. He's got a vertical. Notice you don't need a ground on this. And it just, it, he gets really good coverage with it. John, it terminates it at the peak? Or does he actually run it horizontally? No, it terminates at the peak. Terminates it at the peak. Now, with any of these, you can bring them up vertical and then across as an inverted L. You can make them slopers. You can do whatever you want. you can do whatever you want. So you can set this up as a vertical if you can get a lineup. In his case, he's setting up it as a vertical by using that fiberglass mast. So that's anyway. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. One that's that's always fun. It's still around. It's been around for years and years and years. Is this yo-yo? It's basically two yo-yos with wire wrapped around them. You extend it out, you've got enough wire for a 40 meter dipole. You throw one end up in a tree, you throw the other end up in a tree, and away you go. And these weigh just enough that you can toss it up. Not very high, but you can toss it up. I've got the original version, the high gain yeah. uh, dipole. It's a tape dipole. Pulls it out, marked in frequency. Pull it out to the frequency you want to operate, bring it up. And away you go. Okay, so. And if somebody wants to borrow it, I'll let it, I'll lend it out. Okay. So there are a number of portal, portable vertical antennas. Most of them use a counterpoise. A counterpoise is like a radio, except it's not buried in the ground. It's above ground, and it's electrically isolated from the ground. In essence, all this is is a dipole. The radiator is one half of the dipole, the counterpoise is the other half of the dipole except it's got the vertical element you know we you, you take a dipole and you and you move one of the one of the arms of the dipole vertically instead of horizontally but it can't have an electrical connection with the ground would that be directional yes it'll have some slight direction in the some slight directionality more than a little slight but it, some some directionality in the direction of the uh, um, of the camera points um, you can buy these things one of the ones I, one of the things I started with when I got back into ham radio was the MFJ window antenna. It's an antenna you just put in the window. You know, uh, it's got a little base at the bottom. You close the window on the base. It sticks out at about an 80 or 70 degree angle, and it's got a pep counterpoise, and it's a vertical. And, and a variety a, of coils. And a variety of coils to match to the band. Uh, for my first couple of months of operating, I was operating with that, with a K1 at uh, five watts or 10 watts. I think 10 watts. And I got about 30 states and a couple of countries. Not bad. And that K1 you saw was one of those nice portable radios. It's somewhat expensive, but it's a nice portable multi-band radio. Um, 
some of the other common verticals um, that, that all look, most of which look like this. Uh, this is the MP1. It's got a base. It's got some sort of tripod. Here's the antenna. That's a matching coil. There's the buddy stick, which is just like the buddy pole, except it's a stick. It's only a, a single vertical. It's got a matching coil in it. This is essentially the same kind of thing. If you have a buddy pole, you can just set up your buddy pole as a vertical. There's you know, no difference. Um, Chameleon has one. Uh, they don't actually have the tripod, but they've got a, a multi-band from 80 meters to 2 meters. They've got a couple of them now. And you can set them up in any sort of uh, orientation you want. Vertical, L, inverted L, um, you know, sloper. Terry, you look like you want to say something. Probably. Okay, and the MFJ apartment, which, listen, you know, if you're, if you're desperate, it's, it actually works. What the hell? Um, some verticals can be managed as vertical dipoles. We don't hear about vertical dipoles much. It has all the advantages of a dipole in that you don't have to have a counterpoise, you don't have directionality, you don't have to worry about radials, and it's a good antenna. It's mounted vertically, so it's going to be a, dis a DX antenna as long as you can get it up high enough. Um, so it's, it's very nice. When I take my buddy pole out, a lot of times I operate as a vertical dipole. I get excellent results with it. Um, you know, they're all short, so they use loading coils. With the loading coil, you, you basically, you're adjusting this tap point to get, to get a one-to-one -one ratio. And you, you may be adjusting the whip also slightly. You can get one-to-one, -one, near one-to-one. -one. You get out there and you can get uh, some great coverage with two watts or four watts or 10 watts. Um, some things to consider if you're operating portably, portable, any RF exposure issues, because when you're operating portable, you're probably going to be much closer to the antenna than you are when you're home. So just remember there's charts. The FCC has a chart of exposure, exposure issues. Um, you know, if you look at it, they're saying on 20 meters, the power uh, they have to worry about is if you go above 225 watts. You're probably not going above 225 watts if you're operating portable, but you know that there's some crazy out there who's going to put up a, a short vertical dipe, a short vertical, and takes his amp and takes everything else, runs a power cord back and plugs it in, you know, like like outside the window of your house or something. So just beware. Um, possible bystander state, bystander safety issues. Even if you're only at two or five watts, the ends of the antenna can get up to a thousand volts or so during the course of the cycle. So if your antenna is someplace that a, um, uh, you know, that, that a, a pedestrian can just walk, a spectator can walk over and, and say, oh, what's this? How okay. about a squirrel? <laughs> well, Terry knows. Put a couple of peanuts at the end? Is Terry, <laughs> Terry, knows, Terry knows the story. Terry put up an 80 meter dipole for me. It was my first real antenna. And it, some of it went through a tree. And after a while, I noticed that the dogs were all congregating at the end of the property where the antenna went into the tree. And one day I'm operating, all of a sudden the radio, just for an instant, goes, zzz, you know, I mean, the, the, the needles go, the dials go all crazy. And I look out the back, and the dogs are busy eating a squirrel. <laughs> what happened is the squirrel was in the tree and touched the antenna as I was transmitting, got a zap, fell down. The dogs had it. Barbecue. Bar nicely, nicely, you know, lightly, light, lightly seared. Um, Welcome to the redneck hammer. Right. Yeah. And, and the dogs would sit there for hours, just sit, sit under that spot on, on my yard. And they would just sit there. And you could see the drool pouring out of their mouth as they were anticipating the next squirrel. Dog cargo cult. What did you say? It's like a cargo cult. Yes, it's like a cargo cult. It really is. Um, other dangers if you have guy wires, because some of these you're going to want a guy, especially those, those um, horizontal dipoles. You may want to guy them in, uh, in strong winds. Um, if you have guy wires, your, your, your spectators can trip over them. Um, if you've got a big tripod like the, uh, like the, the buddy pole uses, it's a fairly extent, substantial tripod that can tip over and onto somebody. And of course, you've got a feed line usually running right out to the uh, uh, along the ground to the antenna. 
and you can have bystanders tripping on it. So you really have to be careful. And you know, if you're going to go down to the beach and it's a busy beach, you've got to consider that. Um, you may have RF feedback issues, especially with digital. Digital is very susceptible to RF feedback because it's pulses, it's, nor it's naturally pulses. Uh, your antenna is going to be close to your rig, your antenna is going to be close to your computer. And these computers have no RF ground point on them. No, the laptops just don't have any RF ground points. I was dealing with a guy today trying to help him. <clears throat> he could use uh, digital, he, he bought himself a new 950, FT950 and a, some sort of a laptop and FL Digi wasn't working for him. We finally determined that FL Digi wasn't working for him on anything above uh, four megahertz. Why? Because of RF feedback coming, in, coming into the shack. And he had no real way to ground the, the computer. Um, now, part of the problem was the way he had his shack laid out. For example, the feed line ran right behind the computer. Um, so we're working to, you know, rearrange his shack and get him some ferrite beads and, and things like that, put a choke on his feed line where it comes in the shack. But that computer would just shut itself down every time you started transmitting, anything above, uh, above about four megahertz. So you, you need to consider that if you're going to do digital. And some of the aids, the launching antenna satellites, this is something that John sells. This is a weight with a rope. You know, get it up into a tree. Uh, slingshots, you've seen slingshots, you know about slingshots. This is the easy hang, really nice slingshot. Um, but this may not be allowed in public parks because it's considered a weapon. It's an interesting bit of trivia that has come to light that I only learned in the last two weeks. In most jurisdictions, if that arm piece isn't on the slingshot, it's not explicitly illegal. Right. What makes it explicitly illegal is when this you arm piece here, yeah. because it adds, it, now it dramatically increases the range and power at which it hits. So in fact, um, God, what's his name? Uh, Quicksilver. He sells a slingshot that doesn't have this arm piece. The problem with his slingshot is, is that it's a lightweight piece of crap and it breaks after about two tries. <laughs> I've gone through three of them. I bought one at a, at a ham fest one day. The nutmeg ham fest, got it home after two tries, the, the handle just disintegrated. So I sent it back to him, he sent me a new one. After two or three tries, the metal, this is metal here, it just snapped. And I sent it back to him after two or three tries, something else happened, and I said, okay, that's it. <laughs> Done. Do you still have your original set of bands for your original Easy Hang that I managed to screw up on you and you managed to fix that? I, I bought a new one, I don't know what I did with the bands. Okay. So you do have a new one? It's, I, it's, not, a, it's not a slingshot, it's something else. I mean, it's not an Easy Hang, but it's something else. Right, yeah, right. I'll talk to you about what I got. I can hand it out okay. if you want. They are, I, they are illegal to sell in Westchester County. Really? Okay. What I bought, what I have is, I bought something from PetSmart. It's a tennis ball launcher for dogs. Okay? It's got the handle. Yes, it's that. No, no, not that. This is a slingshot. Okay, it's just like the Easy Hang, but it's, it's got this whole superstructure for holding the tennis balls and making the next tennis ball roll into the thing. It was a lot less than the Easy Hang. And then I put a uh, fishing rod. This is, this is yeah. a standard Zepco 33. Yeah. And that's all this is. So I bought one, I mounted it on the thing, and it's and now got a, a slingshot. Yeah, you always got to remember to, to turn the drag off. Yes. Or, or, yeah. or you'll lose your <laughs> yeah. lead weight. The, the drag, <laughs> drag means that, that as the line's coming out, it's being held back by a break. Yeah. When, you, when you use a slingshot, it's got a, it's not moving the, the it's not moving fast enough and that line is just going to snap and your weight's going to And your weight's going to go flying someplace. I, if you if you come to my backyard and you look carefully in the trees around my backyard, you will see you can buy um, these yellow yellow weights for this. I mean, you know, you can just go get regular silver weights at the at at, at any fishing place, but you you paint them yellow or you go spend the extra money for yellow ones so you can see them 
And if you look up in the trees, you know, what's that, you know? And there's a tennis ball hanging over there, and a, whatever. And one day, my, and there are like three of them hanging over my neighbor's yard. And one day, my neighbor said, what the hell is that? And I don't know, boy, that's weird, isn't it? <laughs> I recently had a problem with my fish reel. I built a gun, similar yeah. to Terry's, and I've been using it for a long time. One of my antennas came down. I shot up a new line over. Full fishing reel up and over and the about 10 feet went? over the tree. I ran out of line. <laughs> it wouldn't hold enough. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, well, that's I mean, that's a... a yeah. Trees grew too high. <laughs> okay, yeah. I had one, I was uh, helping my brother put up some antennas and I don't know what happened. As, as it fired, it went up, and I guess it hit a branch, and it went off yeah. directly cool. horizontally. You know, and, and so when, when all came to rest, and we started trying to find it, and we're looking for the, this yellow weight, and we couldn't find it, so we're you know, reeling in slowly. And over like 60 feet away, there's, there's this thing. You know, it didn't actually go up very high, but it went pretty far. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the things you can use is PVC, fiberglass, or aluminum mass. Um, this is made from PVC, just regular old two-inch PVC that you can buy at any um, hardware store. Uh, this is a military surplus. These were really intended for, for putting up tents, but you buy these, they come in four-foot sections. You can go up to about 40 feet, 48 feet. They just, you know, stick it each one. If you're going to put it over much above 24 feet, you, you need to guy it. There are guy pieces that you can get that, for guying. Um, bases like this, uh, or bases that are basically big, uh, uh, not trying, but, but uh, things like spikes you know, put in the ground. Um, so those are effective, so you just run your vertical up this thing. Uh, or there are either aluminum or um, fiberglass telescoping masts. You can get them from uh, uh, you can get them from MFJ. You can also get them from uh, John. Uh, I, I have I've got a couple of the, the masts from John. He's got them in various heights. The 31 footer I find tends to be a little too flimsy at the top. I mean it just bends too much. It works fine, but I find that it bends too much. Um, but you can buy these fiberglass, these telescoping fiberglass masks. Jackite sells them for putting up flags and stuff like that. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So these are all, these are you know, options. You take something like this, you take something like a buddy pole or buddy stick with you out to the field. Again, you can set it up right where you are, wherever you are. Um, you take a, something nice and lightweight so you're not packing up a 756 and a power supply and a tuner and blah 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 and you can you know you, you can have a good time and don't forget those end fed half waves or the random the random wire all you need is a, a little tuner from uh, well like that little tuner or the little tuner from MFJ and away you go and make sure you're prepared with a good wrap for what it is you're doing when curious citizens walk by give you that jaded book and respond to all the propaganda ads they've been watching for the last 10 years and say, call this number if you see it. Right. But you see it if you say so. Well, you know, or, or you just go the other way and you start speaking to them Arabic. Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in college at the, um, I was in college during the height of the Viet anti-Vietnam War demonstrations. I was in the school radio station. And one day we were running a, 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 an audio line out to a certain location on campus where um, where the protests usually took place so we could you know directly feed back to the station we were digging a trench and burying it digging a trench and burying we, we and it's three o'clock in the morning some dumb frat boys come along what are you guys doing so of course we go oh yeah we're just laying the prime accord you know about an hour later the, the <laughs> <laughs> you know nypd fbi I mean, <laughs> just, <laughs> So anyway, all right, thank you. Very good. Very good. Of course, you come and install them, right? Hmm? 